Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. For Ruby Snack number 14, we're continuing our mini series, Deploy to Digital Ocean, part three, where we will set up Capistrano and ready files for deploy. Lots going on in this episode. Let's get to it. We're going to install Capistrano gems, set up Capistrano, edit database YML, add secrets YML, add action mailer settings, edit the device mailer settings, and password protect staging. We're going to commit all these changes so that it's ready for deployment. If you'd like to code along, you'll just need to have a Rails app created. We are building on a Rails app that we've been working on during Ruby Snacks, so there are a couple configurations that you may or may not need. I've packed them all into this episode just in case. You will need to have a virtual private server set up. We're using DigitalOcean in this mini course. You'll need to have that IP address when we get to Capistrano. You can, of course, check out these previous videos in the series, Ruby Snack number 12 and 13. The first step for today's episode is actually step 10, install Capistrano gems. First, we need to add to the gem file in the development group, the gems Capistrano. Then we're gonna include the gem Capistrano Rails that has a couple of methods to run bundler and to run migrations. We're also gonna include Capistrano Passenger, and this has methods that will restart the app when deployment is done, which is very important. We'll install the gems with bundle install. Then we need to Capify our app. This will install a couple of files that are necessary for Capistrano. Opening up our app in the text editor, we will go to gem file, and then in this development test group, we will add those gems those three lovely gems and save that. Then we'll open up our terminal and in the app run bundle install. And it takes just a moment to install everything. Then we will capify our project by typing cap install. And you see it just makes a couple of files. Now we need to set up Capistrano. We'll edit the cat file to require these different pieces of the gems so that these processes run during deployment. The bundler bundles your gems, the Rails assets precompiles your assets, the Rails migrations runs any migrations that need to happen, and then the passenger restarts the app. Next, we'll edit the config deploy.rb, which was added by our cap install command. We're gonna set the application name. It should match what you've named your application. You need to set the repo URL. For example, I have Ruby Thursday on GitHub, so I'll put that URL right in there. And we'll set the user as deploy. That's what we've been using for this mini series. Then we're gonna set the stages. So we're gonna have both production and staging. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set the linked directories. This will help save space as these directories can be shared between versions of your app as you deploy it. Then we'll edit each of the stages. So first we'll do staging. This is where we'll need your IP address for your particular droplet if you're using DigitalOcean. So you'll have to put in role app and then the user which we've used deploy at and then the IP address. We'll do the same for web and for database. Now the branch we've been using is master, so we'll use that for staging. And then we're gonna deploy it to, and we're gonna tell it to go to this particular file structure on the server. Then we will do the same thing to production, except we're gonna set the branch as production and the Rails environment to production. And then we're gonna deploy to a folder called production. That just keeps it separated on the server so when you SSH in you can see what you have. Back in our text editor we will open up that cap file and we just need to uncomment these lines. These lines are already in there for us. So let's uncomment bundler and rails assets and rails migrations and passenger and that's it. Save that. Then we'll go to config and deploy and copy in our configuration that we already put together. Then we'll scroll on down to find this line with the directories and uncomment it so that we do indeed link the directories. Now we will edit each stage. So we'll move to deploy. 
then staging and we will copy in right under here is a good place we'll copy in our configuration and save that then we'll open up production and put it right there and save Whew, that's it for Capistrano. Next up is editing the other files to be ready for production. First up is our database YML. Since we are having a staging and a production database, we need to put in the information for both of those. We are going to save the password as an environment variable. So we'll put env and then database password. I'll show you how to hook that up in a future episode. Let's open up that database YML file and we'll scroll and we'll just replace what we have in here for production with our new configuration to also include staging and have passwords. The next step is to also add staging to our secrets.yml. The staging and production apps will be in different folders on our server so they'll have different secrets. I'm going to name each of those secrets so that it's very clear so we have a staging secret key base and a production secret key base. We'll simply move into our secrets.yml, scroll on down, and replace production with both our staging and production secrets. You'll only need to do the next step, add action mailer settings, if your app is sending email. Most apps do, so I'm going to include it here. First, you'll need to copy the production environment file to add a staging environment file. Then we'll add the settings to each file. I'm gonna be using SendGrid to send my email. You can use whatever email service provider that you choose. Just a note though, I did try to use Gmail when I was setting up this tutorial and it no longer works. Gmail has added some security features that make it hard for Rails app to use it. it. I was getting these crazy warnings saying that I had to lower my security on my personal account in order to use it in my Rails app. SendGrid has a great free plan, so I decided to sign up with them. So under Action Mailer Base SMTP settings, the address will be whatever your provider is. Then the domain name needs to match wherever you're launching your app to. For example, for this tutorial, I'm launching to a domain name Ruby Snacks, so I'm going to use that there. Then again, I'll use environment variables to hide the email username and email password. Then I'm using the settings SendGrid recommended for the others. Alrighty, back in the command line, let's copy to make that new file for staging environment. So we'll go to that and let's just scroll all the way to the bottom. At the bottom, we will paste in the settings for the action mailer and save. Then we will simply go over to the production file for environment and paste in the exact same configuration and save. Now a quick edit to the device initializer so that when it sends reminder emails or you forgot your password emails, it knows who to send from. We'll go to initializers and then device. And then we simply need to change the please change me at config blah 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 to your email address. So I'm just going to put in melissa at rubythursday.com and save. So you just put what your email address is. Next up is something I highly recommend. Password protect your staging environment. This way you or your client can check out the whole site on a staging site, make sure the database is working, any emails, any external APIs, especially if you're working with a shopping cart. You're gonna wanna test all that manually on a staging environment. So let's password protect that so other folks can't take a look. We're going to be doing that by adding a step in Rack before it runs the app. We're going to have basic HTTP authentication. Again, we're going to hide our username and password with environment variables. Jumping to our staging environment file again, let's just copy that lovely code block right there. The final step for this episode is to commit your changes. Save all that awesome stuff we just did. So we'll get status, get add dot to add it all, and then we'll have a commit message, and then we'll push to master. Here we go, back in our terminal, just typing in get status. Make sure it's what we expect it to be, and it is. 
So we'll go ahead and get add dot, add it all, and then put in a commit message, and then it commits, and then push to origin master. I'm leaving you with a cliffhanger. We're almost ready to deploy our app, but we'll do that in the next episode. I'll leave you with a reminder of another awesome cliffhanger from Battlestar Galactica's first season. Of course, here are some further resources that I've used to create this tutorial. So be sure to check those out. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on that red button right there. You'll get the episodes just a bit before everyone else. If you are not already on my mailing list, be sure to head over to Ruby Thursday to sign up to get more Ruby Thursday awesomeness in your inbox. If you have any questions about this episode, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.